Hello, this is Steve Sines, your ATL Sherpa. Hope you're doing well. I just want to give you a quick overview of a new website that I just launched called the Battle of Atlanta. Uh, this is an educational website that I created to help people learn more about the Battle of Atlanta, uh, which took place on July 22nd of 1864. So let's get to it. Um, so the website is pretty straightforward. It, uh, this is the homepage. And over here on the left, you will see uh, the different pages on the website. This is the menu. And I'm going to go through each of those pages here in, uh, in the next few minutes just to kind of give you a feel for what's on here. There's a lot of stuff on here. Some of it's uh, easy to find. Some of it's not so easy to find. So I want to make sure you understand how to navigate around here so you can get the full benefit uh, of, of, the, uh, of the website. But let me, let me start with a little overview of the Battle of Atlanta uh, for those of you that don't know, because this um, is a battle that most people don't know too much about because they didn't preserve any of the battlefield yet it was a major battle, something like 70,000 troops were involved. There were 9,200 casualties. Um, and even more amazing is this took place in the modern day neighborhoods of Inman Park, Reynolds Town, Edgewood, Candler Park, Kirkwood, East Atlanta, and Grant Park. Those were the primary areas that, um, that, that, that are those neighborhoods today is where the battle took place. So you can imagine 70,000 troops, you know, those were mostly wooded areas that would have been out in the country at that time, uh, you know, from downtown Atlanta, but that's where this battle took place. So there was intense fighting. The battle itself was somewhere between six and nine hours long. Um, it, it started around noon on July 22nd of 1864 and essentially was over by the time the sun went down. Uh, but but during that six to nine hours, there was some very, very intense fighting um, in this area. And that's what this website's all about. But because they didn't preserve any of the battlefield, it's kind of hard to piece together what happened. So that's that's one of the reasons I put this website together. And so I've curated a lot of information that I've that I've, I've come across over the years as I learned more about the Battle of Atlanta. I did uh, walking tours here. Uh, in Atlanta between 2014 and 2022, 2000, I'm still doing them, but much on a much limited basis. But I did several hundred tours during that seven year period. And I did many Battle of Atlanta tours. So I learned a lot about the battle. And I came across a lot of resources. All of those things are baked into this website. So I, I think, uh, and I hope you find it helpful. So this is the homepage. There's an overview of what happened there, I, I mentioned a few of the things that I just did. Uh, the only things that I should add here, uh, if you look at these bottom couple of paragraphs here, uh, General Sherman, G William Tecumseh Sherman, who was the commanding officer of the Union Army that came into Atlanta, um, watched the Battle of Atlanta unfold uh, from, a, from a house that was where the Carter Center sits today, called the Augustus Hurt House. And uh, so he was just literally like a mile away uh, there. John, uh, John Bell Hood, who was the commanding general, the commanding officer of the Confederate States Army, watched the battle from a couple miles away in a house that was the mayor's house at the time, the mayor of Atlanta's house. And that was uh, where Oakland Cemetery is today on one of the highest points of Oakland Cemetery. So you have these two commanding generals watching this battle, which took place um, all throughout Inman Park and Reynolds Town and East Atlanta, but that's where they were. So, um, you know, pretty close to home, especially for those of you that live in those areas. So um, there, there was some um, very, very intense fighting that took place late in the afternoon, around four o'clock in the afternoon in an area known as the what they call the railroad cut, which was literally where the Georgia Railroad was cut through a hill, and they called it the railroad cut. That took place about where the Inman Park MARTA station is today. And if you've ever driven through there, you notice there's a lot of historical markers. That's what those markers are, are, are there for. That they, they, they mark and they talk about the things that happened there. And I'll show you the railroad cut in a minute because that particular scene uh, was immortalized in the famous painting, which is called the Atlanta Cyclorama, which lives at the Atlanta History Center in Buckhead, which is another uh, fantastic resource that that uh, that has to do with the Battle of Atlanta. So 
if you scroll down a little bit further on that home page here, you'll see something called the Atlanta Exploration Map. This is a map that I created uh, in Google. Um, it's uh, it's got a lot of information. So to just make sure that you that you take advantage of it and don't miss anything here, the first thing you want to do is you go up in here on the map, and there's a little icon to the left of the title. It looks it's a box with a little arrow. If you click on that, that will open up the map legend. Okay. This is where the good stuff is. You, you'll want to spend some time here because this is where you turn, you can turn things on and off on the map. So you see the checkboxes over here. Right now, the points of interest are on. The battlefield boundary is on. That's that box that shows about where the battle took place. Um, then I've had a couple of tour routes that I've, that I've designed that are in the map. This is the walking tour for the western part of the battlefield that's checked on there's the walking tour for the eastern part of the battlefield but then there's a few check boxes here that are not checked so when you come in you can check those and that will turn these these are called filters it's content that that either appears or not on the map so these historical markers which is are on right now that's all these little red um pins, if you will. These are all of the historical markers that are throughout the city of Atlanta. There are literally hundreds of them. So that's why this map looks a little busy. If we want to clean it up a little bit, we just uncheck that box right there and boom, now you have a much cleaner map. So these little cannons right here are those uh, points of interest that I mentioned earlier. And if you want to see what those points of interest are, just expand the list right here and those are all the points of interest. These are ones that I've included on the map. And if you click on any of these, click on the cannon or click over here on the, on the name, it'll open up a side panel. Like let's click on this one right uh, here. Artie's Night March Begins. That is a battle, uh, uh, sorry, a, um, a marker, a historical marker that is, that appears at that location that talks about the beginning of Hardy's Night March, which was late on the 21st, the day before the battle. And we'll get to that a little bit more. But over here on the left, you'll see that information. And then you can click the left arrow up here and that collapses that panel. Let's say we go down a little bit further down here. Let's see what happened down here. Okay. Um, in this case, uh, this is the rolling mill, which is in Cabbage Town. This is, if you know where the, uh, the cotton mill lofts are, that's what was there during the battle. It was a rolling mill. And this talks about what was there. And, and if, I, if I was able to find a photo, I've included photos there. So like I said, there's a lot of really cool information in here. So you want to spend some time on this map. Um, you can learn a lot about the Battle of Atlanta and learn about Atlanta in general. Uh, just by clicking on these on um, these links. So again, spend some time with that. One more thing I should mention here. Go back up. Um, yeah, the routes. So um, let's say there's one called McPherson's Last Ride. So if I click on that, you'll notice these blue lines. I can go back and uncheck the other two, the other walking tours, and now just that particular tour, the blue line that I've created. If you want to see all the stops, just expand so you expand that right there. And it uh, tells you all the different stops on that particular tour. That is a tour that you can do as a walking tour or a biking tour. So again, spend some time with that. Okay, so let's go on to another page here. The next page uh, in the website is called Battle Maps. Let's go over here. This is a really interesting uh, area. If you like maps, this is a, a, a web page for you. Uh, this first one is... a. Uh, it's an extremely useful map to understanding the Battle of Atlanta and especially what happened where. This was from the American Battlefield Trust. And if you click on the map itself, it will open up another website, which is their website, and a, and a higher uh, resolution version of this image that you can download and you can get a lot more detail about the Battle of Atlanta. It is one of the best resources that I have found for information, not only about the Battle of Atlanta, but, but about the Civil War in general. It's called the American Battlefield Trust. But um, I've included some bullet points to the right of the image that basically give you a summary of what happened that day. Um, 
And then there's a link here. If you notice, it says, please visit military personnel page. I'm going to get there in a minute, but there's another web page on this website where I've included information about a lot of the key commanders. These are the generals that were involved in the Battle of Atlanta. So, for example, Hardy mentioned him earlier. We talked about Hardy's night march. He was a Corps commander. So this is Hardy's Army Corps right here. And uh, these are um, his core commanders. In, in small, a little bit smaller, you see Bate, Walker, Cleburne, and Manny. These were all part of Hardy's Night March. Uh, this is the main battlefield right here, just to give you some context. This area down in here where the red guys are at the bottom is roughly East Atlanta. And this area at the very top of the map is... Uh, well, this is the Georgia Railroad, so that's the, the MARTA line right there. But just outside of that is uh, Inman Park in that area over there. So the, the Carter Center would be right up over here uh, in this area here. So you can see that was about two to three miles long. This blue line right here is the battlefront, the front line. Um, that is or was where modern day Flat Shoals Road and Moreland Avenue are today. So the Union Army is, is denoted here in blue. These are their army positions and movements, the troop positions. And then in red over here along the bottom and on the left side of the map are the Confederate States Army. Cheatham was another Corps commander. He was up here uh, in the Reynoldstown Inman Park area. And when I talk about that late afternoon fighting that took place at the railroad cut, that's the part we're talking about right there. So spend some time with here. This map is the best one if you really want to understand what happened where in terms of the, the, the troops, the positions, who was involved and where. Okay, here's another map that's fascinating. It was from 1938. It's, I call it the Kurtz map. This is a map by Wilbur G. Kurtz from Atlanta, um, who was... It, probably the foremost historian of Atlanta, but especially as it relates to the Civil War. This is the man who wrote all of the text for all of the historical markers throughout the, throughout the city that have to do with, or the, the state that have to do with the Battle of Atlanta. Uh, he wrote some books. Uh, this is a map that he created that is like a little treasure chest. It, again, think of 1938 when he did this map and what he was trying to do was show what happened where, just like that other map, but in his own way. So he's got 57 different points of interest that he has annotated on this map in, in extreme detail and shows here's the Battle of Atlanta, that, that same battlefield area that we were talking about before. He here's the inner fortifications around the city of Atlanta. This is downtown right here. You can see the positions of all the different um, commanders. And he, he talks about that, you know, where they were the day before, two days before, uh, and so forth and, and so on. He's got the Battle of Ezra Church over here, which took place on the 28th of July. So it, it's, it's really an astounding uh, piece of work if you consider when it was designed and really gives you some insight. It's kind of a time machine back into the, the late 1930s uh, when, when he did this uh, to give you an idea of, of, of what he was thinking. Here's an interesting map. This is a Sherman, one of Sherman's map, the Siege of Atlanta. So this is what the city of Atlanta looked like. This is showing the inner fortifications and troop positions around the city of Atlanta as he came in. This is Sherman's operations map, which shows the entire Atlanta campaign. Chattanooga's way up here. You'll learn about the uh, Atlanta campaign if you spend some time on this website. And this shows um, basically the path that he took, which was essentially along the Western and Atlantic Railroad all the way down into Atlanta uh, uh, during the spring and summer of, of 1864. Speaking of the Atlanta campaign, here's a more detailed map uh, uh, showing uh, the different cities and the route uh, that they took. This is the Western and Atlantic Railroad, Western and Atlantic Railroad, which for those of you who know your Atlanta history, that's the railroad that was built by the state of Georgia, which essentially is why the city of Atlanta is located where it is today. So that was already built because it was built in the 1830s. So in 1860s, Sherman used that railroad line to get his men and the supplies they needed all the way down into Atlanta. That was their route that they took and they prosecuted 
uh, a couple of dozen or at least a dozen different battles along the way, uh, including um, the Battle uh, of Kennesaw Mountain, uh, among many, many others, all the way up through there until finally they made it down into Peachtree Creek on July 20th, and then the Battle of Atlanta took place on July 22nd. Another interesting map here, these, this is a map that shows, a sketch that shows the, the location of uh, the Confederate fortifications. I believe these are the inner fortifications, the red line around the city of Atlanta that were, that were constructed and built to protect the city of Atlanta. So this would be downtown. This is the, where the gulch is right now. There's that roundhouse in the Y junction. This is basically downtown Atlanta. And you can see some of the, the legend there. And then the last um, map on this page is called Hardy's Night March. I mentioned Hardy briefly. This is an incredible story. This is one of the many incredible stories that have to do with the Battle of Atlanta on July 22nd of 1864. So I'll let you read it. Here's a, an excerpt that I took out of another exceptional website called Inheritage Almanac. And that that map that you see there, which shows the route of Hardy's Night March, which was essentially down, uh, there's the Starlight Drive-In on Memorial Drive. He took those, those four uh, uh, brigades of men, you know, we're talking several thousand men all night long on a 15 mile march, all the way down to get out of the sight of the Union Army. And then the goal was to come back up here, up through the Sugar Creek Valley and surprise McPherson's army from behind on the morning of the 22nd. And I'll let you read about what happened there. It unfortunately did not go, unfortunately for Hardy and the Confederates, it didn't go exactly as planned. And so um, they were delayed and and uh, it didn't it didn't go exactly as planned. But that's that's sort of how the battle started late morning uh, on, on the 22nd. And you see these names over here, Claiborne and Manny and Baton Walker. Those were the, the four core commanders, Hardy's core commanders. That, that came up with their men, they actually split right here. This, this road here, if you know where Boulder Crest Road splits and goes off uh, to Flat Shoals Road, <clears throat> it goes up to East Atlanta Village. This is where all this took place. There's actually a marker right there at that split that, that talks about the, 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 the four, you know, brigades splitting off and Baton Walker going up to Sugar Creek and so forth. And by the way, Walker was one of the two uh, major generals that got killed. He got killed right there where Glenwood Avenue is today as they were coming out of Shearer Creek. And if you've ever seen that monument that looks like a cannon pointing up into the sky, that's the monument that was built for William Henry Talbot Walker, who was the major general that got killed there. And then over in East Atlanta on Monument Avenue, there's another monument with the cannon pointing up toward the sky. It's called the McPherson Monument. That was built for James Birdseye McPherson, who was the Union general and we'll talk more about that uh, later as well. So spend some time with these maps. They're fascinating and they're a great way to really understand what happened and where. And if you like history, uh, you, you'll, you'll learn a lot uh, from the maps. Photos and videos is the next page. Um, I've included a lot of photos, some that I've taken. Uh, this first set up here at the top, which are in a carousel. You can actually just kind of scroll through them here. These are some photos I took from the... Um, Atlanta Cyclorama um, that are that are high resolution images that I took uh, actually before it was even open. I got in to see the Cyclorama as it was being restored, and I got some phenomenal photographs that are that are high resolution that really show the detail in this magnificent painting. This uh, is the Troop Hurt House uh, that's over where 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 Degress Battery. Or the, sorry, where Degress Avenue is today. This is where the Degress Battery was. That's the scene that was unfolding around four or five o'clock in the afternoon where Degress Avenue is today over by the Inman Park Marta Station. Here is a picture of the railroad cut. And there's another one here. That is the cut through the hillside uh, that, that we're talking about earlier when I said some of the fiercest fighting took place late that afternoon. This is what was what it looked like in that area. And this image right here, that would have been about where the Inman Park Marta Station is today. Again, just to give you a sense of where this took place. Here's an interesting image from the, uh, from the Cyclorama. This is a, a famous image. This is a hill 
uh, with a house, a white house on the top. That house sits uh, about where the Carter Center is today. Again, this is from the Atlanta Cyclorama, and that was what was called the Augustus Hurt House. And that, as I mentioned earlier, is where General Sherman, William Tecumseh Sherman, watched the Battle of Atlanta. And if you look very closely, where my mouse is pointing right there, there's a guy on a horse, a man on a horse, that's Sherman. And Sherman is looking this way toward, toward the left of the, of the photo. And I'm guessing that he's looking down toward uh, the Degress Battery and the railroad cut that I showed you earlier, uh, which was where the intense fighting took place late that afternoon. It's, a, it's, it's just one of the many incredible sub-stories of this, of this one day battle. Um, but uh, that would have been you know less than a mile away down this hill. But again, just to show you where this took place, that is where the Carter Center is today. If you scroll down a little bit more, there's four uh, videos here. I've, I've only included four. There are obviously dozens and dozens of videos that, that talk about the Battle of Atlanta. The first one is one that I recorded uh, just before I was going to do one of my tours, my, one of my walking tours over right near the Augustus Hurt House. Well, where the Augustus Hurt House was, this is at the Carter Center. So you can see in this video where Sherman watched the Battle of Atlanta uh, unfold. And I talk about the battle. There's that map that I use. I, I, I blew it up and, and that's that same map from the American Battlefield Trust uh, that I talked about earlier. And, and that gives you a good overview of the battle and it shows uh, some good images of the, of the Carter Center and where Hood watched the battle. This second video is exceptional. Uh, it's a documentary, a 58 minute documentary that was produced by GPS, uh, sorry, GPB, Georgia Public Broadcasting and the Atlanta History Center. And it gives some wonderful insight and context for the Atlanta campaign, which was Sherman's march from Chattanooga to Atlanta and all the battles that took place in between. Uh, but it especially gives some very unique insights into what Atlanta was like in July of 1864. The city, the people, um, the things that were happening uh, around the city. And then as Sherman uh, made it uh, closer to Atlanta, uh, it's, it's really an amazing uh, film that, that, that you, you got to watch. It's, it's a must view uh, if you're interested in, in Atlanta history and especially in the Battle of Atlanta. These other two videos here are from the American Battlefield Trust. They're excellent. You can see the titles, Tour Stop Number 30 and Tour Stop Number 33. They did a series of videos <clears throat> that had to do with the entire Atlanta campaign. So these were the ones that, that, were, that pertain specifically to Atlanta and the battles that took place around Atlanta, and specifically the Battle of Atlanta. Excellent videos to give you some really unique insights that I think you'll find helpful. And then at the bottom of this page, I've included some historical photos. Uh, this is a 1929 photo of that Bald Hill or Leggett's Hill, which is where that so-called river of blood was blowing, uh, flowing uh, by the end of the evening. This is where the Moreland Avenue exit is off of I-20 right now. This hill obviously doesn't exist. They pretty much leveled it when they built I-20. But on all these images, if you see there's a little arrow at the bottom of the image. If you want to learn more about the about the photo or the image, if you click on that where it says expand, that will give you, uh, in this case, it's, uh, it tells you that this was a photograph by Walter Sparks from the Atlanta Journal of Constitution, <clears throat> excuse me, from 1929. And it says it was taken between Maynard Terrace and Moreland Avenue looking west. So it kind of gives you a sense of, of where, for those of you that know that area, that will make more sense to you. Here's a couple photos of what Atlanta looked like before Sherman arrived in 1864, and then uh, what it looked like after he left, uh, after the Battle of Atlanta. And there's a link down here to uh, some more photos, American Civil War photos that is excellent. So the next uh, page is called Military Personnel. This is actually one of the more interesting pages, I think, on this website, because if you spend some time here, and I spent quite a bit of time adding information. Again, each of these photos, if you expand uh, the, the text below it, every one of them has the bio. These are all of the key commanders, the military personnel that were involved in the Battle of Atlanta on that day. So I started with the Confederate States Army, just alphabetical order. 
Um, they called themselves the Army of Tennessee. And starting with Jefferson Davis, who was the president of the Confederacy at that time, Johnston and Hood commanded the Army of Tennessee. Johnston commanded it throughout the entire Atlantic campaign up until July 17th, uh, when Johnston uh, got frustrated with him because he was letting Sherman, he felt like he was letting Sherman get too close to Atlanta. So he pulled Johnson out and, and put John Bell Hood in place. So John Bell Hood took command of the army on the 17th of July. And a couple of days later, and launched the Battle of Peachtree Creek on July 20th. That was when he attacked the Sherman army as he was coming across after he came across the Chattahoochee. Uh, and then, of course, on July 22nd of 1864, he, um, he led the army during the Battle of Atlanta. He was the one that watched the army from the, the mayor's house over at Oakland Cemetery. Hardy, here's Joseph Hardy, uh, William Joseph Hardy, who was the Corps commander that took the, the, the four brigades through South Atlanta down by the Starlight Theater where the Starlight Theater is today uh, as part of Hardy's Night March. And then here are his four, sorry, division commanders. You've got Bate, Cleburne, Manny, and Walker. Those were the four guys that were on that bat that, that led through the, the Hardy's Night March that each of them led their divisions. Remember, we're talking thousands of men between these four divisions there were several thousand men walker here's walker the guy on the right is the guy that got killed is the gen he's the major general that got killed late in the morning of the 22nd as they were coming out of the sugar creek valley and sugar creek which is still there by the way if you go down and over there on glenwood avenue right off of i-20 there's a marker there's actually the marker and his monument there with the canyon pointing up that's where walker got killed and then the next group are Cheatham's division commanders. This is uh, Major General Cheatham, uh, who is uh, a corps commander for the Confederacy. He was up, his, these guys, uh, his corps commanders, sorry, division commanders, were up close to uh, Inman Park, Reynolds Town, in that area. They were the ones that, that prosecuted the attack late in the afternoon. This was sort of the second part of, of Hood's plan to, to, to collapse McPherson's army uh, was to hit them from the north, which would have been McPherson's right flank uh, after Hardy was supposed to hit the left flank down in East Atlanta. So this was all part of the plan. And this is what you'll learn when you when you uh, when you start studying this thing. And then the Union Army here, are the key personnel, starting with Lincoln, of course, there's Ulysses S. Grant, who was the head of the army at that time, the U.S. Army. Here's Sherman and here's James Birdseye McPherson. Um, on the very far right here, McPherson is the other major general that died that day. He was in charge of the Army of the Tennessee, which was the Union Army that was positioned over in East Atlanta at that time. Um, and uh, he got killed uh, just a couple miles away from where Walker got killed. And, uh, and they got actually... They both died within hours of each other and within a couple miles of each other. And I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but the McPherson Monument is down in East Atlanta, just a couple blocks from East Atlanta Village off of Flat Shoals Road on the, um, McPherson Avenue and Monument Avenue. Uh, that's where the McPherson Monument is. And then down below, you've got uh, McPherson, McPherson's Corps commanders that played a role. Logan played a very prominent role. Uh, but my point of this page and what 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 I took away as I as I curated all this information, and by the way, if you click on the images themselves of these of these guys, you will open up a larger, much more detailed biography of them. And uh, I've linked it to their Wikipedia page. So there is tons of information, historical information, links. But here's the takeaway, or here's what I took away from this. When you start reading the this, even these summaries that I created under these images, you come to realize that these generals that were here in Atlanta in 1864 fighting and really throughout the Civil War, most of these guys participated throughout the Civil War, were highly accomplished men before the Civil War started. And those that survived went on 
to build extraordinary businesses. They were senators, they were politicians, they ran companies, they started companies, uh, they were mayors, they were governors. I mean, these were extraordinary individuals uh, on both sides. I'm talking both the, both the Union and Confederate side. And that's really what I took away. To, so to think that these men, that these individuals were here in Atlanta in 1864, fighting in the woods in 95 degree heat, uh, is it's just, it boggles my mind uh, to think about that. And when you start putting the names and the faces and the stories, the lives of these men, you start when you start uh, assimilating, when you start processing them, this battle and this event, to me, takes on a whole new dimension because it humanizes it and it and it 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 brings it to life, for lack of a better word. It it, it just makes it more profound. At, at least it does for me. And again, the stories that you'll find in here, like this story of McPherson, is it's just amazing. I mean, they, they could probably make movies out of some of these uh, lives of these guys. Last page is the reference materials. I'm still adding information to this page, but really the whole website, at least for the next couple of weeks. But I've curated uh, a lot of information here, but I, but I only selected information that I thought was truly exceptional resources that I thought were truly exceptional. So it starts with articles and papers here. If you want to read something, if you live in Atlanta, especially if you live in any of those neighborhoods, click on this link, McPherson's Last Ride by Wilbur Kurtz. I've mentioned him earlier. He was the historian. This is a, the, the map uh, General McPherson, the man, the man that I just mentioned here that got killed over in East Atlanta Village. Uh, Kurtz sort of retraced the, the, the route that Sherman took when he rode his horse to his death. Uh, as the, the title of that article is um, McPherson's Last Ride. Um, you know, the day that McPherson kept his rendezvous with death, I think was the subtitle of, of it. And, it. and it's an incredible story. But what you're what you're talking about here, this route starts over in in little five points, basically where he and his men were when when the battle broke out. And and what happened was McPherson heard the gunfire and the cannons going off down in East Atlanta when when Hardy's men were were coming out of Sugar Creek Valley and that 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 fighting started. It was a surprise, and when he heard that. That, that gunfire and that the sound of those cannons going off, he jumped on his horse and started riding toward the, the, the sound to, to, to sort of, the word is reconnaître, which is a French word for recon. It's to, to, to survey the area of what was happening. And he did that being the, the, the incredible soldier that he was. He wanted to go see what his men were encountering and what were going on. And as it turns out, he'd been in that location earlier that morning as part of his recon. And he rode back to where he was that morning. And when he when he rode there in the morning, his men were in control of this particular area where he could see that the fighting took place. But in a matter of hours, not to get too detailed here, but Cleburne's men, one of, one of the Confederate uh, division commanders, had pushed the Union Army back. And we're talking about right in East Atlanta Village there. And by the time McPherson got back to that area around noon, things had shifted. He didn't realize it. And he rode right into a Confederate picket. And one of them shot him off of his horse, literally. Uh, and that's where he died. And that's where that McPherson monument is. So that's where that took place. So my point here is Wilbur Kurtz documented the route that McPherson took his horse on, which basically runs through Edgewood, a little bit of Candler Park, and well, Edgewood and Kirkwood, and basically right across where I-20 was today, and right south of where that is, is where he got killed.
right there in East Atlanta Village, where that's why they call it Monument Avenue and McPherson Avenue. So, I mean, that's just one of these articles that I I, I took a, a fascination with McPherson. And if you if you spend some time and get to learn about McPherson and his life, maybe you'll understand why I was so fascinated with that general. But he was 35 years old and uh, quite a remarkable individual. Here's some books that you can read if you're interested. Again, I just selected a few uh, that I thought were really exceptional. In fact, there one of them is about McPherson, best second one, Forgotten Hero, uh, by a woman who was, I believe, a school teacher or a librarian and or historian from his hometown uh, that wrote this uh, because he's kind of been forgotten over the over years. But this is where you really get to get the insights into what an exceptional human being uh, General McPherson was. Uh, Civil War general information. These are all, every one of these is, is an incredible website that you can go to. Digital projects, some fantastic resources here. This last one, War in Our Backyards, is one of my favorite. That is from the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. That is a uh, kind of a honorarium, if you call it a will, or just, a, it's, a, it's a project, an online digital project they put together that has, it's a treasure trove of information about the Battle of Atlanta. It's very, very specific to Atlanta. Letters and memoirs, some amazing stuff in there. And then the last section here, trails and tours, you'll just have to spend some time here. I've, I've included what I could find on, most of these are self-guided tours, but again, there's some exceptional resources there. So anyway, that's my website, the Battle of Atlanta. It's work in progress. Think of it as an educational portal, if you will. Um, if you find it helpful, please share it with your friends. Uh, you can support my projects here at the bottom. There's a donate button if you want to support my many map and educational projects here. And if you want to you know, follow me and track what, what my new projects are, that go up to the top here and uh, click on the subscribe button. That takes you over to my podcast, which is atlsherpa.com. And that's about it from here. I hope you have a great day. And um, I hope you enjoy this new website. This is Steve. Very chill, Sherpa. Sure